welcome back to Bin Cotton Bridge with me, Oyster Boy. I hope you're well today. So when we last left Bin Cotton Bridge, we were talking about eventually how it will expand and where we'd like to go for the future as far as uh, changing this into a, or, or cultivating this as a mainly wool producing town. I think we're going to keep producing ale. That's a good trade good. But, um, you know, expanding our capacity to farm sheep and uh, produce wool for trade. Um, however, it occurred to me the other day, I, I've, I've now twice said that we've basically built every structure that you can build in this game, and that's not entirely true. There is one other structure you can build, uh, and we just haven't had a need for it, so that's why we haven't built it yet. Um, and that, of course, is the boarding house. Um, and it probably would make sense for us to build one. Uh, so let's talk about the boarding house. Let's see, that is... Is it in here? Yes, the boarding house. The boarding house is a structure... It's a home, uh, but it's a structure for... It's a home for the homeless, essentially. Uh, it's, you know, well, you know what a boarding house is. It's a, you know, a place where you rent to stay. Um, and uh, it helps you with homeless citizens. Now... A boarding house is especially useful if you are going to bring on a lot of um, nomads. If you're going to bring on a butt-ton of nomads, um, having a boarding house means you don't need to find them all homes right away. They have a place to stay. Um, but if you're not planning on bringing on nomads, why have a boarding house at all? Well, it's another type of insurance against disasters, right? You can have disasters, and um, one of the disasters you could have is a tornado or a fire, and that could take down several houses. And so you'll have, you know, maybe, you know, four or five, six families that have no place to live. Um, and if that's in the middle of winter, that could be really, that could be really bad news. Uh, it certainly won't be good for the health of your citizenry. Um, so given that, you may want to put in a boarding house to protect against that. So I think we should do that. I think, you know, that, that could happen. Before I put it in, though, I think I want to see if we can build a little tunnel through here. So that we can stay on our grid. Oh, we can build a tiny tunnel. What I've noticed about tiny tunnels is that if you've already put structures near them, forget it. Like, it probably would have built that there before I put the cemetery down. But once you put the cemetery down, it won't do it. So let's build this tiny tunnel. Right, let's lay that through like that. <coughs> there we go. Good. All right. So now let's see if we can build. Let's see if it'll still let us put the boarding house there. I think it will. Yes. But if I had put the boarding house there first, I'm willing to bet you, I'm willing to bet you that it would not have let me put in that tunnel. So I'm pretty sure now if I were to try to put a road in over here, I bet it won't let it. No, yeah, see, so I can't build that road through there, which seems kind of weird, but... Alright, so if I was building the grid, that would be block 16 and I would want to come over to here so it's not quite on the grid but it's okay there okay there goes our boarding house going in and now we will have a place for the homeless to live in Bin Cotton Bridge. Mm. 
By the way, if you ever find yourself becoming bored with Bin Cotton, with Bin Cotton Bridge, <laughs> please don't become bored with Bin Cotton Bridge. If you find yourself becoming bored with Banished, keep in mind that there are achievements in the game. Um, you haven't seen me earn any because of, I've been playing it for a while, so I have most of the achievements. But um, there are interesting kinds of achievements, like if you build a community that has no farms, like that relies entirely on hunters and gatherers, which means you'd have a ton of hunters and gatherers. Uh, you can earn an achievement. So you can come up with creative kinds of communities um, that uh, creative kinds of communities that uh, don't quite fit the mold of a standard banished community and try to make it work, you know? Okay. Um, so this, let's see what this merchant has to offer. Livestock. He has sheep to offer. I think we have all the sheep we need. If we need to make more sheep, we know how to do it. This pasture is full. That pasture is full. I would like to bring another pasture online, but I don't think we have enough laborers kicking around for that. Let's have a look here. Ernesto is of marrying age. Barely is not. No. Ballas will soon be of marrying age. Raniel is certainly of marrying age. I think we could stand to add a house. Let's have a look at these ones here. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Definitely have some more geriatric people. We're going to have some more people dying off. I think it, it would be probably prudent to add a house or two. So... We've been working on this block here, so let's add another house here. Now you probably noticed that I've been keeping this area open, where we have our service services. I'm sort of preparing for when we need a second school. I figure it's probably going to go here or here or something like that. And you never know. You might want to cram a second blacksmith in here, and we, we can fill it in with houses or with storage barns, you know. Try to keep some places in, in your town open um, as it begins to bulk up, you know, just so that you are not roped in. Okay, it's early winter, the year 40, and um, we uh, reached uh, capacity on storage for produced goods again. <coughs> I resisted the urge to build another barn and instead have been upping the inventory in our trading post. Um, Jaden's the general goods merchant has shown up. He has pepper seeds, pear seeds, and peach seeds. Um, those are all good to have. They're very expensive, though. That's that's one hell of a price. Um, if we were going to get all of those, we would have to be able to trade 9,300 units of stuff. Now we have uh, 1,500 ale. So what if we traded all that? Yeah, it would be overpaying by 2,000 units. See, this is why, was, this is why we wanted all that ale stored up. Uh, 1,100 units. I'm overpaying by 25 units. Seven additional units. All right, so we'll do that. 1172. I'm overpaying by one unit. That's fine. I'll overpay by one unit. And that gives us pepper seeds, access to pepper seeds, pear seeds, and uh, what was the other one? Peach seeds? Check trade items. I thought it was peach. Pear, peach, yeah. Pear, peach, and pepper. So that's a good thing. Uh, we have had a number of citizens die off, uh, just from old age. I took all miners and stone cutters offline and uh, just uh, sent everybody across the river here to just gather up uh, uh, resources here. They've gathered up a lot of it. They're not done yet. There's still some iron here that they're gathering. And I think there was a couple more. I guess I must have missed that one. No, no, that's on their list to gather. With this one, that one I missed. Um, then now we're back up to sort of respectable amount of stone, so we got to get up to a respectable amount of iron. 
Um, but because we've had such a die-off, I haven't really looked at adding uh, another herdsman yet and, and making another pasture. However, I did lay out this section of grid and cleared it out. Um, and the other problem is that the cemetery is almost completely full. Uh, 38 out of 40 graves. Now, graves, strangely enough, graves do decay over time. Um, a grave in the cemetery is not permanent. After a long time, it will disappear. So the number of graves can actually go down. It doesn't... it's not zombies. That's not what it is. Uh, the graves just decay and go away after time. But it does mean we're going to have to throw down another cemetery uh, to deal with the fact that ours is a reaching capacity. We don't want people to die with no place to bury them. Um, so, I was thinking about maybe on the other side of the boarding house, right here. Um, let's see. Uh, town services. Cemetery. How big a cemetery could... There's a hill right there. That's the problem. Right. I guess we'll put it there. Alright, so we've got to get that cemetery in. And there's this little tiny plot of land. I don't think now... I don't think we can do anything with that plot of land. Let me just see. Can we stick, like, an orchard there? Small orchard? Yeah. Yeah, we could do a 5 by 6 orchard. So let's do a tiny little orchard, and we will make it... Um, one of our new fruit trees. How about peaches? Alright, and for that, we will need uh, one new farmer. Houses here. I did stick another house here. So. Yeah, in fact, it probably is time to put in another house. Let's put in one more house there. That's a cabbage field. So we've got cabbages across from cabbages. So let's change this one to peppers. Right? We have plenty of cabbage fields. And if we can find uh, maybe one of our potato fields too. So let's see. That's potatoes. Oh wait. This is peppers. We don't want to put peppers next to peppers. This is potatoes. Let's let them harvest this, and then after they're finished harvesting, we'll switch this one over to peppers, too. Just to get some variety in our crops. All right. Peppers. There we go. Okay. Well, it's early summer. Uh, or now summer of year 42. And we have peppers! Which I think they will be harvesting pretty darn soon. We had a couple fields of peppers, yep. Groovy. We also have seven laborers now, which is plenty. We just turned away 14 nomads. Hey, nomads gotta live too, but they don't gotta live here. Alright, so I think we're gonna put in a new pasture. So let's get that pasture set up. Um, under food. Past ya. And there you go. And I think we'll do it like that. There we go. Bring a couple builders online. We did have a scary situation during the winter. Uh, suddenly and unexpectedly, our firewood just took a nosedive. Uh, which says to me that our population, which is growing, it's reached over a hundred now, uh, was now now needed more than a reserve of, say, 650 firewood. So, I've raised the reserve of firewood to a um, thousand, I believe. Let's take a look. Production. Yeah. So now we have to have a thousand firewood on hand. Um, and the current log limit is 750. And right now, even though with the firewood up at 1,000, we still have 500 logs, and our foresters will bring in more. We may have to add more foresters. We'll have to wait and see. I think we probably should up that, up that, though. I usually like to have the log limit and the firewood limit have parity. 
that might be a mistake, but I'm going to up that. And as long as we are insisting that we have that kind of stockpiles on hand, I think we may need an... Excuse me. Yeah, that kind of stockpile. We may need a stockpile. Um, let's see. Where would be a good place to put it? Well, how about here behind the church? Um, it's close to the Forester and not too far from the Woodcutter. And this particular piece of land falls outside of the areas of control of our forestry related services over here. So I think having that stockpile will be good. Alright, the pasture got built. We're going to assign this as a sheep pasture. Uh, we need to add a herdsman. And then we're going to pick one of these pastures and split it. So this one's got 12 animals, and this one's got 12 animals. This is the closest one, so I guess we'll split this one. And the game will just automatically figure the right thing to do, we hope. Come on, sheep. Six of twelve. There they go. We may need to start thinking about adding more foresters. Alright, let's think about that. Um, we do it over here on this side of the river. There's almost nothing over here. And that would leave us this side for development. We could add another forester's lodge here and then assign a couple more foresters. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to do it. We're going to go for it. So I think that's that's where we want them. All right. That's one more builder that we need. Now, adding a second forester's lodge would mean that we have six possible employment slots for foresters. So, but this will help ensure that we can get a decent sized stockpile of logs going. Alright, so that circle comes to here, which means this little area here is still open, so we could put another crop field here. I don't think we can do anything there because it's a hill. And we could probably fit a little something here, either a crop field or a house, probably a crop field. Okay, builders, anytime you want. We're ready for you. Road's all laid down. There they go. Well, this is exciting, our second forester. Yeah, we're all the way into late spring, and we still don't have anywhere near the thousand logs we want to have. So, let's double our foresters. Oh, that's true. You can have up to four foresters. Let's do it. Let's max them out. Okay, eight foresters. That will definitely, I have to believe, that will resolve the issue we're having uh, getting logs. Right, we still have six laborers free, because our population is growing by leaps and bounds. We're at 221 stone and 109 iron. Is there any iron we could just scrape up off this map real quick? Do you see any? I don't see any. I mean, there's some back here. That's awfully far back. We've got a road here, I guess. It's early summer. Maybe they could gather it up before it gets cold. Let's let's see if we can do that. Let's, let's tell our citizenry to scrape. Sneak back here and gather up that iron. Theoretically, we'll see them crossing the... Yeah, there they go. There goes one. Let's follow him. Waiting the laborer.
go get him, Waden. And that's it. <laughs> Starting to get cold. Temperature's down to 33, and the firewood's dipping a little bit. Let's look at that graph again. Yeah, firewood took one hell of a hit in that one year. Now it's back to steady state. Maybe it was a very cold winter or something. I think it will stabilize out. Now that we've added a second forester, I think it's going to stabilize out. Ten sheep there already. And we must have a lot of wool in our inventory now. Yeah, we've got almost 500 wool in our inventory. And a lot of warm coats. That's good. And our population's health is now five hearts, finally. It was four and a half for the longest time, and I, I'm pretty sure that the higher quality clothing is what made the difference. Alright, how are we doing over here? 113 members. Ten more people added, so the population is growing quite quickly. Without me really having to add any houses, which I probably am going to have to do soon. Alright, we're at eight laborers. That's a good place to be. Um... I think since we have eight laborers, we can throw another miner and another stone cutter on the job. I haven't seen any complaints about storage. 79% full. 95% full. How's our food graph looking? Pretty steady state right now. So, if it's steady state, then we should probably add a new crop field. It's probably time to do that. Uh, let's see, crop field. Alright, so... Looks like the biggest crop field I could put here really is that, 6x7. It might be better served putting a house there. How big a crop field can I put here? 8x8. Eight which I think might take two farmers. But if I do 7x7, seven seven, which I can fit there. Alright, so we'll do that. And what's this? This is beans, so this one will make uh, peppers. But they have to remove those trees first. So let's do that. We need to bring a builder online. And now we don't. <laughs> uh, actually, we do, because I'm going to run a road around that. We lost one of our hunters to old age the road right around this, and yeah, I don't think we need to build a bridge across. It seems like it would be overkill, doesn't it? Bring the builder back online so they can come over here and build that, and uh, we'll make this uh, peppers, and we'll assign a farmer. There we go. Very good. All right. I think we're doing pretty good in Bin Cotton Bridge. So I think we're going to draw the episode to a close. We've increased our population to um, whew, 116 citizens. We've maxed the health of our citizens. We've maxed the happiness of our citizens. Iron tools. Does he take ale? He does. He does. Let's just take them. That's less stuff we have to take. That's less iron we need to use. Let's just take it. 330. No problem. I wonder if he has steel tools. He does. Let's ask for steel tools. Bring steel tools. Is there anything else we want him to bring? Warm coats, maybe? No. But steel tools, yeah, definitely. Bring those. Every visit. See ya. Yeah. From ale to steel tools. That'll be awesome. So anyway, I think we're ready to draw this episode to a close. Uh, we built a boarding house uh, in case we have a uh, disaster of some kind. We have added a new graveyard. We've acquired peaches and pears and peppers. Um, 
we've split another pasture so now we have three active pastures of sheep be able to make a fourth soon uh, we've been quite successful at trading communities growing things are looking pretty good we've even added a second forester boy look at all those baby trees <laughs> holy smokes they've been busy I'll be able to put one more let's put a house here farmers will love that Can you imagine if you were this farmer, the farmer who works this field, if you don't, if you couldn't get into one of these houses, then you'd have to live way over here, right? So, this house will be prime real estate for any farmers in our community looking for a place to live. <coughs> and this will be the last house we build this episode. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much uh, for joining me today. I hope you'll come back next time to Ben Cotton Bridge so that we can get our community growing even further on our road to 200 citizens and then splitting the community and starting that uh, secondary suburb across the river. That'll be fun. All right, guys, take care, and always, bye-bye.